February is looking like a very busy month for us PC gamers. We've got quite a few great looking titles coming, many of which I've been eagerly awaiting for a while. If anything, it almost kind of sucks that these games are all launching around the same time. I just know that I'm going to miss out on a few of them since I simply won't have time to play them all. So hopefully things slow down in March and I get time to catch up. But hey, it's kind of hard to keep a straight face and complain that, oh no, there's like too many great looking games coming out, right? So. Anyways, let's, let's just get into it. First on our list is Dying Light 2. This open world action zombie game takes place 20 years after the original in a place called The City. It's just one large city and the last human settlement that is unfortunately rife with conflict from the outside and within. On the outside, you got zombies trying to rip your head off and on the inside, backstabbing humans who can't get along with each other because of course that's what's happening. <laughs> I really enjoyed the first Dying Light. It was probably one of my favorite single player zombie games. It was just good fun roaming around the world, doing the parkour thing, and then punching zombies. And for that reason, I've been looking forward to this sequel since it was announced. Um, the parkour system in particular was one of the standout features of the original. It is making a return in Dying Light 2 with an even greater emphasis on verticality. Since the game is set in a big city, there are like massive buildings that you can climb up, move throughout, and even launch yourself off of. They've even added a gliding system that lets you catch updrafts and sail around the environment. Now, besides the parkour stuff, the game's melee focus combat also plays a major role. There's all sorts of different types of melee weapons like blades, knives, wrenches, bats, hammers, and so on. You'll find them in the environment along with other items that you can use to modify the weapons, adding different effects that let you deal with the variety of enemy types and situations. Like certain weapons will be better against different types of zombies. By all accounts, this game is set to be very large. After all, they did recently say that a 100% completionist run would take in the ballpark of 500 hours. So yeah, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a lack of stuff to do in this game. Of course, there'll be a main story campaign where you follow through the narrative, talking to various characters and uncovering mysteries. They say that this lasts around 20 hours. And then on top of that, there will be plenty of side quests, collectibles, upgrades, all sorts of stuff to discover and places to explore. One of the big new features in Dying Light 2 is the faction system. Basically, depending on the decisions that you make during a playthrough, you'll be unlocking and gaining access to new areas of the map, and in turn, you may be locked out of some other areas for that same reason. Dying Light 2 is launching on February 4th for the box price of $59.99. Odds are, by the time you watch this video, the game and its reviews may already be out, so certainly go and give those a look before diving in. Uh, in fact, over the past few months, we've seen a ton of reviews from the preview build of the game, most of which from what I saw were fairly positive. From the outside, not having played it myself yet, I would say I'm very optimistic based on what I've seen, but of course, don't take my pre-launch guesswork for it. Uh, just go check out those reviews yourself because yeah, I think they come out in like a day or two. Sifu is a third person action game with Kung Fu inspired hand-to-hand -hand combat where you play as a young Kung Fu student on a path of revenge. After your family was murdered, you're out there searching for clues and trying to hunt down the people responsible. So there's two real key elements to this game. First is the combat system. It's really unique and interesting. It's got some essential action combat features like there's a parry, a counter attack, but you're also, when you set people off balance, able to throw them in any direction, tossing them up against walls or even down on the ground. You can also lean or duck to avoid incoming high attacks or jump to avoid low hits. There are attack combos as you alternate between light and heavy attacks, doing these in specific orders will end up culminating in these special bonuses like pushing enemies back, knocking them down, or stunning them. Attacks and parries also decrease your opponent's balance, and once you break their guard, you're able to then finish them off with a takedown. However, enemies can do the same thing to you, so you have to really be careful to make sure that you don't get set off balance. There's all sorts of options in the environment for you to do. You can jump over terrain, uh, use it as an obstacle to give you space between you and your opponents. You can pick up objects and use them as weapons. There's also this focus skill that's sort of like an ultimate. Once the focus meter is full, you're then able to do precise eliminations on opponents. Besides the combat though, the game also has this unique death and aging system. So when you die, there is this special pendant that will bring you back to life, sort of like any video game. However, in this game, with every death, you will also age. Now, as part of that process, you do get to 
spend skill points to unlock new skills. So that makes you stronger and helps you better deal with whatever situation caused you to die in the first place. But the more you die, the faster you'll age. And if this happens enough times, your pendant will eventually break for good and your character will be dead, making you start the game over. Now, there will be some cross progression where things that you have learned to let you accelerate through the game a bit quicker. But yes, this game does have a permadeath mechanic. This will be coming to the PlayStation and PC via the Epic Store on February 8th for $39.99. Oli Oli World is an action platformer that blends a world full of strange places and characters with side-scrolling skateboarding. This game takes place in Radlandia, a skateboarding utopia full of eccentric characters and vibrant locations. It's got a rather unique art style and aesthetic that's a bit of an evolution from the original Oli Oli. The developer says that this is a game all about flow. It's really about getting in the rhythm of landing big tricks, huge grinds, and then moving seamlessly from one to the next and throughout the environment, all while vibing out to some EDM tunes. Basically, if you like side scrollers and skateboarding and colorful worlds, you might enjoy this game. Some of its key features include split routes and multiple paths between levels, letting you pick where you go and offering options for players of any skill. You can compete against others in leagues where you use this deep combo system and over 100 mute moves to rack up your score and try to top the leaderboard. There are millions of unique levels in the game's sandbox mode, as well as character customization where you can change your looks, tricks, and style. This seems like a really cool, chill game to just spend some time vibing out with. Oli Oli World launches on February 8th for $29.99. The Western release of Lost Ark is finally upon us. At this point, I've sunk about 100 hours into the game, and I can confidently say that I like it and I will be playing it a lot this month, most certainly. Lost Ark is a top-down action game that is also very much so an MMO with all of those trappings. It has seen quite a bit of success in other regions and as such is why it's been highly anticipated here in the West. Now, as I said, I have played a bit so far between trying out the Russian servers and some test servers for this version of the game. I am by no means an expert as there are people with thousands of hours of playtime, but I do have a basic idea of how things work. So the game starts you out uh, taking you through this story-driven campaign. You'll move through these fairly linear fantasy environments, completing main and side quests, gathering resources, collecting loot, and also going through leveling dungeons, which I found really impressive. I made a whole video about why I liked the dungeons in this game. After somewhere between 15 to 20 hours of what many ways feels like a linear story-driven game, you're going to hit level 50 and reach the continent of Vern, which is where the end game begins and those MMO elements really kick into gear. There's a variety of repeatable end game activities that you'll be doing on a daily and weekly basis. You've got chaos dungeons where you slash through hordes of enemies on these three separate levels. Guardian raids have you hunting down a specific boss. In a lot of ways, this is like a watered down version of Monster Hunter. And then there's abyssal dungeons, which are just the harder end game versions of the same type of dungeons that you come across while leveling up. Each of these activities reward gear, materials to upgrade that gear, and various other useful items, materials, and currencies. So you start out at this end game tier one, you farm for gear, you upgrade that gear, and then when you reach a certain threshold, this lets you move on to tier two, granting you access to the next level of those end game activities and better gear. And that process continues in the same fashion until you reach tier three. All along the while, you'll also be unlocking new zones that you can go to and quest through. And it's just this uh, leapfrog progression through the difficulty levels of the content. Outside of that loop, there's also a ton of other stuff to do and see in this game. Daily and weekly quests that take you to various continents and out to sea, which reminds me there is sailing in this game. You've got a boat, a crew, and a giant ocean dotted with islands to explore, with each island being unique and having its own quest and stuff to unlock. There's gathering and crafting. You'll mine, chop, and gather materials and then use them to make consumables. There's an island estate, which is like your own private island. You can customize the look of this and also unlock various progression stuff here. There's also this tower that you fight your way through enemies, climbing the floors of each of these levels and unlocking unique rewards. And then there are world events as well, like boss fights, ghost ships, portals. I mean, I could go on and on for like another 30 plus minutes talking about this game, but suffice it to say, I've really enjoyed my time with it and I am looking forward to this Western release. The Lost Ark will be launching on February 11th. The game is free to play, but I should note one last thing here. It does have pay to skip the grind elements to it. So if that's a deal breaker for you, 
just know it exists in this game. They're also selling Founders Packs as well if you want a three day head start. I really like the game, but I hate that stuff like this exists. It's like, this is just what it is with free to play titles, but early access stuff and pay to accelerate, it's not my favorite, but I guess that's what you get for having a game with as much content as this has that's completely free. I don't know, I don't love the trade-off, but that this is just where we're at in gaming right now. Legacy of the Sith is the eighth expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic. This one centers on the conflict between the Galactic Republic and Sith Empire. We'll be taken to Manan, an ocean planet that's home to a valuable healing resource that both sides are fighting for control of. We'll discover new characters and storylines in addition to some new features and mechanics. There's combat styles, letting players separate their class story from their gameplay, and offering greater customization than the game has ever had before. Basically, no matter what character you are playing, you can choose from any of the game's advanced class options. So you can be a trooper wielding a sniper rifle, a Sith Inquisitor with a lightsaber in each hand, or a member of the Jedi Order who also dabbles in dark side powers. Any combination you can think of, you are now going to be able to do. There's the new Flashpoint Elom, a snowy planet full of ancient runes to explore. This will be playable solo or in teams of four. There's the new Operation R4 Anomaly that takes place on a secret research base inside an asteroid. A new season is being added to the game. The level cap is being raised to 80, and there's an improved new player experience coming as well. I am way out of the loop when it comes to SOTOR, although this is one of the handful of MMOs I would like to revisit. Similar to Final Fantasy XIV, this game is supposed to have a major emphasis on its narrative, on the storytelling, and I do remember having a fun time with the game when it launched back in 20. 11, but admittedly, I have been out of the loop ever since. I'm curious to see how this thing has held up. Legacy of the Sith will be launching on February 15th. Total War Warhammer 3 is a turn-based strategy real-time tactics game. This latest installment marks the conclusion of a trilogy, and it's all about commanding and combating the forces of chaos. The game features a host of new modes, locations, and methods of war. There are more playable factions than ever, with choices to suit any style, whether you you like to turtle up, use deadly magic, or get up close and personal, there is a faction that will cater to you. There's a story campaign that will take you through the realm of chaos. You can tackle it in different ways with these different factions in what they are calling a strategy sandbox that ensures no two campaigns are ever the same. Other features include the ability to unlock new attributes, weapons, spells, and stat boosts. You can customize your body parts, powers, and play style with millions of potential combinations and combine demonic units from each of the Chaos Gods to build your own army. This game is also going to be playable either solo or in groups with friends. This is one of those game series that I like rarely ever see or hear talked about, but I know at the same time this thing has a massive following, so I'm sure many of you are looking forward to this game. It does seem pretty cool. I'm just not super into grand strategy games. Total War Warhammer 3 launches on February 17th for $59.99. It's also going to be available for free as part of game Game Pass. Destiny 2 is getting an update this month. The Witch Queen expansion adds a bunch of content, including a new destination, crafting, and new weapon types. We're headed to Savathun's Throne World. This is a spooky, haunted swamp looking region with big alien structures and a haunted ivory castle. I gotta say, the environmental design of Destiny continues to remain a strong point. This stuff just looks really cool. Why are we here? I don't know, ghost witches or something like that. <laughs> There's a new craft crafting system that lets us create custom weapons with unique combinations of mods, shaders, and advanced stat pools. There will of course be new exotic weapons added to the game. And there's a brand new weapon type, the glaive. These can perform melee attacks, but also fire projectiles and deploy energy shields. There will of course also be all of the usual additions. There's a new story campaign, a brand new raid, and some other group activities. I don't know, Destiny 2, it's like such a great and fun game to play. And every time I revisit, I have a good time with it. Although, even though I understand the reasons behind it, I am still a bit disappointed by their decision to cycle out content that I've paid for. It's kind of insane sounding when I say it out loud, like I paid for content and it's just not there anymore, and I gotta hope it comes back at some point in the future. But hey, who knows, maybe now that Sony is buying Bungie, they can afford to give me back the content that I paid for back. That'd be good, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know Destiny fans don't care, but for me it's like, 
What's happening? Anyways, Destiny 2's Witch Queen expansion launches on February 22nd for $39.99. Take Dark Souls, make it bigger, more modern day, more open world, and there you have the upcoming release of Elden Ring. By all accounts from the preview events that have been held so far, this is shaping up to be a really great game. And outside of Lost Ark, this is the other title that I am most looking forward to playing in February. It's got the unique brand of action combat popularized by the Souls series with a few of its own twist as well. There's a huge assortment of weapon types with their own attack patterns and styles. You can also add, mix, and match skills onto those weapons on top of that. And this game is going to have a much larger emphasis on magic. It's just going to be a much more effective means of combat. The open world is larger than anything ever seen in prior Souls game. Um, it's got vast open fields, forest, mountains, shorelines, huge dungeons and ruins with complex layouts. There's also a new mount system to help you traverse this much larger play space. There's all sorts of unique enemies around every corner of this world. And speaking of which, you can expect the usual over the top insane boss fights in this game. They're pushing character creation and customization further as well with more options and combinations to fit whatever play style or visual appearance you care to see. And then like other Souls games, Elden Ring promises to be rich in world building and lore that can be uncovered in more cryptic manners, reading item descriptions, interacting with statues and plaques in the environment, talking to NPCs that give little hints about their background and history, stuff like that. And of course, it wouldn't be a Souls game without multiplayer having a big emphasis. You can summon allies to help you or you'll be invaded by enemies. I should note though that that exploit that has taken down Dark Souls PvP servers is apparently also present in the code for Elden Ring based on the preview events and what players found. And as of now, this has yet to be resolved. So just a heads up, if this issue isn't fixed prior to the release of Elden Ring, you might want to avoid online play because this is a pretty serious issue. But besides that, Elden Ring is looking great, shaping up to be an awesome game. I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be launching on February 24th for $59.99. End of Dragons is the third major expansion for Guild Wars 2 since it was released in 2012. All of the expected MMO expansion content will be here. New regions, quests, items, and gear. We'll be exploring the lands of Cantha, an Eastern inspired area that blends natural landscape and futuristic technology. This zone looks really cool from the previews they've shown. Other additions include jade bots that can help us enhance our movement capabilities or aid us in combat. There are new means of travel like moving platforms, floating skiffs, and the siege turtle group mount. New elite specializations for every class in the game, offering brand new ways to play these classes and new weapons to use. There are new dungeons, bosses, strike missions. They've even added fishing to guild wars. It's about damn time. <laughs> and there's going to be a new customizable guild hall. Now, I took a revisit to Guild Wars 2 last year, in fact, and I had a really good time with it. Um, I never ended up getting around to a video, but I sunk a bunch of time in and I really, really enjoyed it. I think the game's held up pretty well. I am looking forward to checking out this expansion when I have the time to get around to it. I think I'll be pretty busy with Lost Ark and Elden Ring, but once I'm done those, Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons is next up on my list. And we finally got a release date up until a couple days ago. It was still to be determined, but yes, February 28th is when End of Dragons launches. The standard edition will be available for $29.99. Now that actually does it for the main portion of the list. Uh, you'll notice that's only nine games. I honestly just couldn't pick a 10th game that I was personally interested in in enough to include here. So what I wanna do for this last bit here is mention a few of the other runners up that you might be interested in. These include Life is Strange, the remastered collection. This is the award-winning narrative heavy story game from Deck Nine. It's being repackaged and remastered releasing this month. There is the Waylanders, a party-based RPG full of Celtic myth and historical legend. This will be leaving Steam early access in February. Call of Duty Warzone is getting season number two. King of Fighters 15 is a fighting game if you like fighting games. Martha is Dead is a dark first person psychological thriller set in 1944 Italy. And then Grid Legends is a motorsport racing game. And then also I want to mention the fact that Rumbleverse, the 40 person brawler royale, was supposed to come out this month but has been delayed. So we're going to have to wait a little while longer for this, which is a bummer because this looks great, but also probably good news because like I've said, there's a bunch of other games that I'm already going to be busy with this month. And with that, we will wrap up this month's list of the 10 best looking upcoming new PC games to check out. Well, the nine best looking games
games and then a few extras. You know, even though I didn't like come up with a full list of 10 games this month, there are enough games on this list that I just can't wait to check out and hope I get the time to. In particular, I definitely want to play Dying Light 2. Obviously, Lost Ark and Elden Ring are high up on my list. And then after that, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll check out the Destiny 2 Witch Queen expansion. I would like to tell myself that I'd play this Total War game, but that's probably not going to happen. But anyways, it really doesn't matter. I try to come up with 10 games for you guys to check out every month. I'm not going to play all of them. It's just impossible. I've tried. I've tried to be like, yeah, I should just play every game that I talk about in this list. But that's impossible. There's no time. I'd have to take no days off. And I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> so anyways, that's it for this month's list. Thank you guys as always. Appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.